third phase of the moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and we're live taking your calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon. The number to call in is 347-934-0378 to report your sighting to third phase of moon radio. A few days ago, we just released theories in regards to the missing Malaysian jetliner 370. People are saying, well, everybody has an opinion. We at Third Phase of Moon have uh, want to share our opinions. And some of the opinions that have uh, come down through Gmail, Skype, everywhere you name it, people say that there's possible alien involvement with uh, what's going on here or maybe a quantum space jump, interdimensional uh, portals, black holes in the Indian Ocean sucking up jetliners, possible terrorism. Let's hope not. Anyway, if you have an opinion on what happened to the Malaysian flight or a UFO sighting you want to report, call in tonight. Now we're going to go to our first caller, area code 818, Dr. J. Andy Elias. You're with us, third phase of moon. What's your uh, take on this uh, new update? We released our video yesterday, and there's breaking news. The BBC claimed that they found the plane. We wake up in the morning, and there's nowhere, uh, nowhere... To see that this story does exist, the plane's still missing. What's going on? Absolutely, Blake. You know, this is very convoluted. First of all, the Boeing 777 jet Dreamliner does have three separate, I don't want to say transponders, but radar detectors and all other things. But the problem is, is even if the pilots turned off the transponder, why didn't the ping each hour pick it up from the military when it first disappeared why did they say they can't find it but now six days later they say they found the direction it went it's very very uh, it's getting worse each day you know i think um you know four days ago when we posted this we were uh you know bringing up the chatter you came up with um the theory of the triangle the bermuda triangle of the indian ocean uh, the Asian Ocean, uh, excuse me. What did you say, Dr. J? All I'm knowing is that the main media picked up on basically your words and uh, some of the theories that the Internet was all a buzz of conspiracy. I think Third Phase of the Moon had something to do with it. That's right. The Devil's Triangle is actually the polar opposite of the Bermuda Triangle. And for hundreds of years, if not thousands with boats, things have been disappearing Uh, planes, boats, everything. This falls in the region of the Devil's Triangle. But at the same time, just like you said, the news today saying that it's pinging four times once each hour, showing that it's going a westerly direction, uh, really boggles me. I mean, how how can that be? Either disappeared or didn't. Now the current, what they're saying, the current uh, status is that it might be hijackers. But if it was hijackers, they could only turn off the transponder in the beginning, all right, in in the cockpit. They could turn off the transponder. However, Boeing has these pingers. I, I don't know what better way to describe them, but they shoot off to radar every hour telling them the heading of the plane. Well, if four of them went off, then where is the plane? Well, I think that's the uh, the million dollar question right now. Where is the plane? And uh, we have Bradford Blair on the chat. He's saying, if we never find the plane, we'll just never know what happened. And uh, he also has a question for you, uh, Doctor Doctor J. He's asking, how could they read the ping if it's in the triangle? I completely agree. Uh, again, six days later, they bring up the pings where they couldn't bring them up the first day because Boeing says that in the system itself, it cannot be turned off, and it's sending it directly to Boeing. They could have had it for the first five days. For them to come up on the sixth day and say, okay, now we know where it's going, that's a little fishy to me. I also want to remind you of a case from 1978 called the Valentik Disappearance. Frederico Valentik was an Australian man flying in the Cessna 182, and the same thing happened to him, except this time he has 
or the people, the, the control tower, recorded the actual conversation with him. What he said was that there was an object trailing him. And then later down the line, he said the object was above him, and it was hovering above him at the same speed. Even later, you hear metallic clanking sound, and then he just disappears. From the face of this earth, there was a large-scale recovery team to try to find this gentleman, and to this day, they have no idea what happened. There was that, uh, yeah, you know, these people go missing all the time in the in these large oceans. People have made that loud and clear right here at Third Phase. I mean, there's uh, large bodies of oceans and planes and boats go missing all the time. But in this case, this this jet's massive technology is so up to date. As I'm talking right now, it's raining big time right here in the Big Island of Hawaii. So you might hear that rain dropping. It's uh, cats and dogs right now. But it kind of reminds me of uh, the Philadelphia experiment when apparently the military was dealing with time travel and, and uh, you know, warping time, and then it kind of went bad on them. And when they came back into existence, some of the crew members were embedded in the iron ships themselves. The That's holiday. right. And, and some of them disappeared completely, and which makes it even more of an anomaly. The difference is, though, is now we have the t- technology. First, like I said, we have the radar. Then we have the GPS, which can track it. We also have satellites. The satellites can read the wristwatch time on our hands. If they can do that, why can't they find a 200-foot-long plane with a 200-foot Wingspan. I mean, that just boggles me. Now, the other theory. You know, that uh, you know, some of the around, people are saying too is, uh, you know, it's a fair argument, and I, I, I could kind of understand the the false flag going on if this is a false flag. Just to what again, Bradford Blair sh- sharing on the sh- chat here is that this could be just kind of a story, just to take our eyes off what's going on in the Ukraine right now. It absolutely can, and this will not be the first time that the U.S. government or any government, a large government, have done the same thing to divert attention to to something else when there's something bigger going on. So that is definitely a possibility. The last thing they said was that they, because they see it going west because of the satellites, that they think it was hijacked and maybe landed in an island or something, but think about that. A small island accommodating a Boeing 777 and then taken off two years later to crash into a building, I don't think that's going to happen. If they stole the plane, landed it, and covered it with a tarp, the moment it's uncovered and be flown again, it will be tracked. Remember, like I said, the pilots can turn off the transponder, but there are two other features that Boeing installed to make sure that nobody can shut down where the location of the plane is. So I don't know if I buy this hijacker terrorist thing because if they did, let me ask you this, hijackers and terrorists do one thing. They do damage and then they want results. What are they asking? If, if this was Al-Qaeda, the very first day they would have said, we took down the plane, listen to us. Or if it was a uh, a military group that wanted something, they would have said, we got your plane hostage, give us this. But no demands have been made. It's almost a week, Blake. I mean, this is very serious. 250 souls on board, I mean, that's very serious. Well, uh, it, it is uh, dead serious, and we're hoping that the family members are, uh, you know, the families and the people aboard that airplane are still alive and and hopefully they could be reunited with their families. It kind of brings me back to uh, The Dark Knight, when uh, Christian Bell movie, where Bane actually, you know, hijacked an airplane and took it over via another, a bigger airplane and uh, in mid-flight. And, you know, maybe this is something straight out of a James Bond movie, and, and uh, people are saying that there's the Navy SEALs on their way to this island. Well... God bless the Navy SEALs if they could uh, find something and solve this mystery. But right now I want to go to they have uh, you know, opinions of what happened to the Malaysian Flight 370. Stand by, Dr. J. 
No problem. 818, welcome to Third Phase of Moon. You're uh, live. Oh, uh, hello? Yes. Uh, I know what you're thinking. I, a minor, but still. Uh, I find these opinions shocking. I, I was too young to understand the 9-11 attacks. But, you know, it was a devastating time. That's what I heard. Well, definitely uh, 9-11, if you weren't around and uh, during those times, it was a, a major uh, event for the world, definitely. And this is uh, another main event that the world is watching. What was your uh, first instinct? What do you, where do you think the – do you have any uh, theories of what may have happened to the airplane? Um, the Bermuda Triangle, I guess. Uh, I heard about the Bermuda Triangle. And theories have it that aliens are in the Bermuda Triangle, like UFOs. All right, man. Hey, hey, thanks for uh, joining us right here at Third Phase of Moon. Let's uh, take another caller right now. Uh, Area code 562, you're uh, live on Third Phase of Moon. You have a UFO sighting you want to report, and do you want to chime in on the conversation about the Malaysian airline flight? Hey, Blake, how you doing? It's Fausto Perez. Fausto. Um, uh, about the UFO report sighting, I did get one sighting. Well, we had like 15 sightings at my last event on Sunday. Uh, we were able to record one awesome sighting. We were recording a crescent-shaped object, and a green orb just zooms right by it, and you see it on the on the camera go by. As we recorded with the telescope, actually, so it was really clear quality. I just sent you an email of it. I wanted to remind everybody that this weekend I have another event at Hilltop Park and Signal Hill, California. It's really nice for you. You get to see the towers of L.A. up to the towers of Long Beach. You get to see the beach coast and on top of the hill. Actually, uh, right now, Fausto, we're talking about the Malaysian airline flight, and we wanted to get opinions on that. And, you know, obviously you have your announcements. But, uh, you know, this show's uh, kind of dedicated on this topic of the Malaysian flight. So we're going to keep it on that and uh, take another caller. Eric code 213, welcome to Third Phase of Moon. 213, you're live. Third Phase, do you have an opinion on the Malaysian flight? Go ahead. Two one three. Well, we'll go back to uh, Dr. J and Elias. I know Dr. J. You know he's been uh, jumping out of airplanes and thank God with parachutes for uh, many times. How many uh, jumps have you had, John? One hundred and twenty-eight. All right. Have you uh, ever had a UFO experience while you were up in the air? And uh, are you afraid for yourself flying? Now, Actually, I am not, and truthfully, I do look out the door and the windows, if there is windows, depending on what plane, to see if I see anything. But one of my good friends did catch something in the sky. On his helmet camera, he was free flying, which is basically not belly to earth. It's uh, sit flying, you know, basically like you're sitting on a chair and he's flying. In his camera, you see a small, dark looks like a goblin creature trailing him and literally right by him and as soon as he opens his parachute it dodges off to another direction and i thought that was very extraordinary uh, also with regards to the ufos and what you said about bane in the batman movie that is a great great stunt they did in the movie but however that cannot happen here and this is why we have so many satellites orbiting the earth, literally tracking everything we do, every single plane. A plane that has 200 feet wingspan, 200 feet length, cannot just disappear or have some sort of a Bane-type attack where it takes it down. And that's why I'm uh, leaning towards mass abduction. If you recall, we interviewed David Dunger approximately a year ago, and he was on an airline flight, a big one, you know, maybe 150, 200 people on board. The whole plane was taken. However, it was returned into flight. So that's the difference between that and this. What do you, uh, there's these uh, reports going around that actually people are, some family members have spoken with the people on board. Have we, uh, Got any new information on that, or is are uh, are these proven rumors, or what? Have you heard the same thing? I've heard something similar, and that's what shocks me. Six days today, saying they that the military has pings, right? Well, three days ago and four days ago. 
they were saying that they can't find it on radar. It's not pinging. The black box is not, you know, sending a signal. However, family members on the ground were able to, I don't know, necessarily talk to the people on board, but they were able to reach their cell phones on board. If a cell phone works at 35,000 feet, why wouldn't a radar that can be so precise to see ants on the ground not pick up something so massive? That's why I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't buy that theory. You know what's interesting is that uh, how about this theory that CNN put out? I was watching it and I, I was um, thinking, when are they going to start bringing up, you know, the possible alien abduction? The mainstream media, everybody's talking about it on the internet now. But their theory is that uh, one of the most ludicrous theories I've ever heard of, and the, heard of, and they're saying that there's a could it have been a possible meteorite that uh, took it out? What, what do you think of that theory? Absolutely not, Blake. For the same reason I said earlier, the radars can see or the satellites can see everything. They would have seen a meteorite or anything that would have collided with it, and immediately there would have been wreckage on the ocean floor. Another thing is, you know, I I don't really know how to explain this. Six days later, you know, if it was an alien abduction, why was it, uh, you know, not returned? Sometimes abductees talk about having the ability to uh, having their neighbors shut off. But again, when we spoke to David Dunger, he flew on the plane and then he was taken. The whole plane was taken and he was placed back. But this just does not make any sense. Neither does anything they say. Now, let me ask you this. This is a, a hypothetical. Is this a catalyst to force disclosure, meaning that did the ETs actually take this plane and keep it for a long period of time while feeding the people on board and then come forward and say, yes, we're here uh, is that possible? It, it is. At this point, anything's possible, but we can rule out what we know, and one of the things we can rule out is the meteorite hitting the plane. Well, uh, Dr. J, I think uh, you know CNN knows how to put twists on things uh, bigger than anybody else on the planet. But I, you know, I want to uh, thank you for joining us while talking about this matter and uh, the world listening, uh, Dr. J. I know we just uh, spoke with Sean Stone. We just put that out on uh, YouTube just a few minutes ago, so everybody go check out the Sean Stone interview. He talks about Skinwalker Ranch, us uh, possibly living in a real matrix, the matrix, the movies, not fantasy, but the real life. Uh, any other things that Sean Stone said there, Dr. J? Oh, yes. He talked about the uh, World Bank, how that's corrupt obviously how our system of, uh, of the economy runs on debt and the moment that we are no longer in debt our economy is going to collapse uh, several things he talked about this man is not just specialized in one specialty such as UFOs he touches every conspiracy including FEMA death camps uh, you know martial law uh, New World Order. He actually even said that the Bitcoin, when it first came out, he thought was the New World Order currency. Wow, uh, you know, the exclusive interview with Sean Stone right now, YouTube, Third Phase of the Moon. Uh, you know, it's been a crazy week, and uh, things are happening right now, so this uh, radio show is going to be a little short. But I invite everybody to join us next week, Friday, 9 p.m. L.A. time, 12, 12 a.m., New York time. Everybody, keep your eyes on the skies. And if you capture anything amazing, send it to us via Skype or Facebook, Third Phase of Moon. My name's Blake Cousins, and we'll see you again next time. Liner, 370. People are saying, well, Everybody has an opinion. We at Third Phase of the Moon have uh, want to share our opinions. And some of the opinions that have uh, come down through Gmail, Skype, everywhere you name it, people say that there's possible alien involvement with uh, what's going on here or maybe a quantum space jump, interdimensional uh, portals, black holes in the Indian Ocean sucking up jetliners, possible terrorism. 
Let's hope not. Anyway, if you have an opinion on what happened to the Malaysian flight or a UFO sighting you want to report, call in tonight. Now we're going to go to our first caller, Airy Code 818, Dr. J. Andy Elias. You're with us, third phase of moon. What's your uh, take on this uh, new update? We released our video yesterday. And we're, there's breaking news. The BBC claimed that they found the plane. We wake up in the morning and there's nowhere, uh, nowhere to see that this story does exist. The plane's still missing. What's going on? Say they found the direction it went. It's very, very, uh, it's getting worse each day. You know, I think, um, you know, four days ago when we posted this, we were, uh, you know, bringing up the chatter. You came up with um, the theory of the triangle, the Bermuda Triangle of the Indian Ocean, uh, the Asian Ocean. Uh, excuse me. What did you say, Dr. J? All I'm knowing is that the main media picked up on basically your words and uh, some of the theories that the. Third Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins, and we're live taking your calls from around the world in regards to the UFO phenomenon. The number to call in is 347 934 to report your sighting to Third Phase of Moon Radio. A few days ago, we just released theories in regards to the missing Malaysian jet line. Absolutely, Blake. You know, this is very convoluted. First of all, the Boeing 777 jet Dreamliner does have three separate, I don't want to say transponders, but radar detectors and all other things. But the problem is, is even if the pilots turned off the transponder, why didn't the ping each hour pick it up from the military? When it first disappeared, why did they say they can't find it, but now six days later, 